All right, everybody, it's episode 22. We're working on the fuselage. In episode 21, we started disassembling the bottom skin just to start cleaning up some of the holes, prime the parts. And then in this episode, I'm gonna finish taking that apart. I'm gonna get the parts cleaned up, primed, and we're gonna rebuild this bottom skin. But before we get started with that, I wanted to talk about something really important. After I published episode 21, a friend of mine who watches my videos, I guess, but isn't an airplane builder, sent me a text and asked me, why do we have to deburr the holes? And it's a great question, and I never really thought to explain why we do this. I'm always showing you that I'm deburring holes and talking about cleaning up the edges of the skins and deburring and all that, but I never really explained why. So before we get started, I wanna go over to the brand new kit plane enthusiast edumacation board and talk about deburring holes. All right, so the first thing I wanna explain is what a burr on the aluminum is. So let's say you have a sheet of aluminum and you're looking at it from the side and we take a drill and we drill down through the aluminum like that. We're gonna get a hole like this. This is our, our hole through the aluminum but you're not gonna get a nice perfect hole like that. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get a burr and everything I draw on the board is gonna be exaggerated just to show you, but you're gonna get like a, you know, aluminum around the hole like this. There's usually a smaller burr on the side that the drill goes through and a larger burr when the drill pokes through. And so that's, that's what we wanna remove. The reason we, we remove it is because let's say we wanted to put a rivet in here. Well, if we insert a rivet, it is going to sit in here like this. And when we smash it, it'll look kind of like this. And you can see the rivet really isn't squeezed against the aluminum. It's kind of crushing the burr and it's sitting on that burr. All right, now let's say we have our sheet of aluminum with a hole through it with the burr. And we want to rivet this up against another piece of aluminum. So now we have another piece of aluminum with a burr on it, like this. Here's our sheet of aluminum with the burrs, right? Now, notice these two sheets of aluminum can't touch each other. There's a space right here because these burrs are in the way. Again and again, when you put your rivet through there, you're gonna smash that together. And some of these burrs will smash down a little bit but you're still not gonna have a nice, perfect contact with the two pieces of aluminum. So what we wanna to do to our aluminum is we want to remove these burrs from both sides of the hole so that the aluminum now is nice and flat. And then if we put another deburred piece of aluminum up next to it or under it like this, now we can put a rivet through our rivet head will sit on the top and the bottom after you squeeze it will look like this. And there's no space anywhere. There's no space between the rivet and the aluminum on both sides. There's no space between the aluminum. You have a really nice, solid, secure joint. Now there's one thing I really wanna to stress to you guys about deburring holes. And it's very important, especially on thin sheets of aluminum like the skins of the wing or the skins of the fuselage. So let's say we have our hole with the, deep, with the burr on it, right? Just like this. And a lot of people will use a deburring tool that you spin in your hand. It looks like this. The problem with this tool is, so you have a point on the end of that tool like this. And that's made to spin down here. And what it does, is it cuts off this burr. But let me show you what can happen. Let's get rid of this. If you go too far with this tool, here's what's gonna happen. You're actually going to countersink your hole. So that deburring tool will come down like this and you're going to countersink that skin. Now, if you do that on both sides, let's say this is what your skin looks like now. Let me uh, erase this. We'll get rid of our deburring tool. So now this is a, you know, a cross section of your skin. So what happens now when you put a rivet on here like this, 
it's going to it's going to come down like this kind of like that so you notice now you have all these spaces in the corner where metal isn't touching the rivet isn't touching anything that's a really weak joint and the thinner this aluminum the easier it is to bevel the edges like that or slightly countersink it and that's why on a lot of my holes especially on the thin sheets like the wing skins or the fuselage skins if you were watching in episode 21 i think it was if we have a a hole like this with our burr. Okay, here's our, here's our aluminum. If we use a file to get rid of that, we can file this off nice and straight like this. So now we have a, a really nice flat surface. We haven't beveled this at all. And that's why sometimes I will use the file instead of that rotary tool. I think it gets a really nice edge on the hole and you don't have to worry about it countersinking your thin skin. Now if you have a really thick piece of aluminum, and there are some really thick pieces of aluminum in the airplane, you know a little tiny bit of a bevel on here isn't really gonna matter probably. You know when you put your rivet in like this it's still gonna it's still gonna be a secure joint. My point is just be very careful when you're using that spinning deburring tool not to go too far and actually countersink your skins or your parts. This is the last of the rivets in the bottom skin that I'm drilling out. Now I can separate all the skins and all of the parts. While I have them separated, I'm just cleaning up the corners a little bit, just very slightly um, rounding off the sharp corners. I'm sanding down all of the edges to make sure the edges are perfectly smooth. And I'm going to carefully use my file to remove the burrs around all of the holes in the skins. And any L angles are a little bit thicker. I use that spinning tool for those. After I finished up with the holes and the edges and corners of the skin, I'm just using a Scotch-Brite pad here to scuff up the skin because I am going to prime uh, the interior of the fuselage. When I was finished with the other side of the skin, I flipped it over and I removed the primer and I'm doing the same thing on this skin. I'm scuffing up the surface to prime the inside of it. Here is what it looks like with the parts and the bottom skin primed. And I think right now it's ready for reassembly. There's my aero LED beacon that I'm gonna put on the bottom of the airplane. These are two of the steel parts that get mounted in the fuselage. One of them is the flat motor bracket and the other one that I'm opening right now is the one that goes in the very back on the bulkhead uh, in the back of the fuselage. So I need to get these prepped and then I'm probably going to take them out to get them powder coated.
You'll see in just a minute what this is for, but I'm making a, an uh, aluminum piece to go under the flat motor bracket between the longer on and the other L angle. And the reason I'm doing that is just to take up the space that's between the skin and the, the, uh, the longer ons. You'll see in just a minute what I mean. We'll get the edges filed smooth, the holes deburred, the corners rounded, and we'll see how it fits in between the longer on and the L angle. And what this does is when I rivet it all together, it just makes a nice tight fit with the skin and the flat motor bracket. And yes, it does add a little bit of weight to the airplane. In this case, it's 0.7 ounces, but in the end, it's worth it, and I'll show you later how this works. With all of the parts now primed and clecoed back in place, it's time to flip the bottom skin over and start riveting it all together. Well, with the bottom skin upside down on the workbench, I'm ready to re-rivet it together. And you'll notice right over here, I just put some masking tape here because I don't want to put, there's three rivets here and three rivets here. I don't want to install until I actually have that flap motor bracket installed. But the rest of the rivets are ready to install. And I always say doing the riveting is the, the most fun part. So I just put all the rivets in the bottom and got it all riveted together. All right, we're back to the starting line again. Almost. There are two L angles. There's one right here and one right here that I need to, I wanted to replace. There's a couple holes I just didn't like in it, so I'm gonna order some new ones. Other than that, everything else is riveted on. I'm not gonna rivet these on until I get these bulkheads put in, just because I don't know if they'll be in the way. So I'll wait on those. Same with these. The uh, L angle here goes under here, so I'll, I'll wait to rivet these. Everything else is done. I have the beacon from Aero LEDs and that will get mounted on the bottom skin somewhere right about here so i can get that mounted in episode 22 we're going to start working on some of the bulkheads in the back here and then we have two bulkheads up front which are actually sitting on the workbench right here but i do have to uh, deburr all the holes clean the edges and prime them to get those all prepped for installation so that will be on episode 22. I will see you guys there.